All right, Mike, where are we at now in this club? Well, we, we decided we didn't like the old shaft on this 693 because it was pretty rusted, and John found a nice set of green band rockets with yeah. leather grips that he likes. I love the green band rockets. Yeah. So nice we got to do a slight uh, overbore. Not much. We just got to clean it out, and I've got to taper. So we got a little, little stiffer shaft with that green band rocket shaft, right? So we're going to have to bore that head out a little bit. Yeah, if you like them. That's fine with me. Okay. Here's a tapered reamer that you can find. Uh, that just happens to work for most of the work we're going to do here in a minute. Okay. And in order to not expand any cracks that are in this neck, we're going to use this old sleeve ferrule cover off of a Stan Thompson club. So if you ever take now, a Stan, now what is that again? Let's let's talk about this old. Well, sleeve it works on just here. like that. It cover it. Stan Thompson used metal instead of plastic to cover the whipping. Okay. So I save stuff like to that. To cover over the whipping or under the whipping? Over the whipping. Over the whipping. Okay. Over the whipping. Got it. I just tap it on. I want to. What I want to do is not have that any existing cracks expand any when I bore it out. Right. So then we're, you're going to pull that off after you drill. After we're done. Got it. Okay. It's just a temporary attachment. We're just going to very slowly run this tapered reamer through here. Okay, so you got what a nine thirty seconds in this there? Is, a yeah, the, the tapered reamer didn't quite do the trick, so we're going to have to go in, go in just a little bit with this. I've kind of already done it, but just to show you, we just run in and get down to the bottom. And if you're very careful, you can actually come in this way too. You just be very careful with this. Now, if you didn't have one of those sheathings to put over, are you dead in the water? Or would you just come in from the bottom end and be really careful? You just have to be careful. It You could wrap it with a little bit of whipping, but the, a lot of times when you pull the old shaft out, you get a little bit of a neck crack. We got a little bit there. Mm -hmm. So what I don't want to do is that, to have that expand. Right. Now, I have used um, the... Let me find John. Because that little thing there isn't exactly something that you're going to find out at the hardware store. I have used this kind of hose ring, hose clamp. Mm -hmm. You could use a hose clamp on, on there. here. Just kind of put get on the there small lightly. one. Yeah, put and that'll, small one. Okay. that'll hold it. Well, that, that's good for uh, people to know that there is another solution. Because you know something like this, uh, you know, where are you going to get that? You have to you have to take apart a Stan Thompson. Yeah, Stan Thompson. Where are you going to get that? <laughs> so. Okay, tricks of the trade. But all right, we got another solution. At least get some of us by if we can't find. All right, anything. so we know the shaft's going to fit, and that's going to slide right on there. Yep, and there it comes out. And you just line that up with the old cut on there. Looks pretty good. Little filing down. And there it is right there. So that's the that's the total bore through 100%. Exactly. Now the other thing we'll do on this is we're going to have to take these screws down. We'll do that in a minute. But while I've got this here, I'm going to mark the location for the back screw. Oh right, right, because we're gonna we're gonna go back and pin that thing again. Now that pinhole might not necessarily line up because that's coming from a different shaft, right? Sometimes so. I use a half pin, only get the back half, which is better than nothing, rather than try and drill a complete new hole. Most most modern epoxies will hold it, but the pin is good cosmetically and it's also good practically to hold the shaft. Yeah, well, but even if you get a half in you're doing pretty well. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to mark this. We'll see what happens when we go all the way through. I'm I'm going to try and offset it just a little bit. I'm trying to center the bit. All I want to do is mark the shaft. We may have an existing hole there that's pretty close. Let's go ahead and take that off. All right, you can see John here. Yep, it's different. It's a little bit different, but it's it's close. It's close. So what we're going to do is probably just enlarge that hole. And we'll get through there. 
Well, that was easy because the hole already existed. Yeah. Well, if it doesn't, easy. there's another there's another way to, to make your hole. Yeah, we should probably cover that. Let me demonstrate it on another shaft. Yep. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. For demonstration purposes, if you do have to drill a new hole in the shaft, how are we going to do this? First of all, you can notch the shaft. I happen to have a rotary tool, but you mm -hmm. could do it with a file. Okay. I I marked where the the new hole is going to be with the the drill bit. I'll pretend that it's right here. Right. What I do now is at an angle. A little Dremel tool. That's a Dremel. But you could do it with a file. Okay. With an edge of a file. All right. Just so you can get the bit to, to just start. To get, just to scar the shaft and to make a flat spot. So you can see there we have kind of a flat, semi-concave spot. Right. That, that allows us to get the drill bit started a little right, easier it's, because it's it tends shiny, to, right. yeah, it slides off the harder chrome and the round shaft. That's clever stuff there. This is where sharp drill bits come in. You don't try and go too fast, take your time. And then I notice you're cutting out a little bit of an angle. A little bit. Because it's, it's going to go in at an angle. Right. You, can, you can cut it straight and then tilt it. Now you can put that in the in the head and align that up and see if you can get into fresh wood. So what we'll do with this shaft now, the actual shaft we're going to use is once again I like to put it in here. Just kind of hold it while I work the head on. Now if I've done it correctly, I line that flush up here. I take my back screw. One of the things I do is I go ahead and pre-drill the back screw in case I ever have to take it out. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's got a 1 16th inch hole in it. Happens to be the one I took out, but I'm going to reuse it. I see. Because it could happen that the epoxy doesn't hold, something happens where we need to pull the head off. This allows us to get our number one easy out in there. And pull the back screw out. And pull that out. Okay, well, that's good to know. This is this process takes a little fooling and fiddling and trying, and it can be a bit frustrating at times. Excuse me. Well, not this time. But we're on top of the old screw. Well, but might. that's going to give us still more support right. than without. So what I'll do is I'll mark how much of that to cut. And you cut it from the other side. And I'll cut the other side on the grinder. Probably take the threads out and we'll just we'll pound that in when we epoxy it. Right. I could re set another hole different than this one. Mm -hmm. But I believe that this will be more than sturdy enough to handle well, this. I've been known to just dig those whole things out with a just dig them out with a hatchet, <laughs> practically. Well, there's to a, get them out. So that's a good good way to know that there's a. I, mean, I always knew there was a better way to do it than. There is even a better. There is even another way to do that. If you had to do that and you wanted to get it out, I'll see if I can find the tool. They make a hollow diamond drill bit. Okay, so we're going to glue in glue in the shaft now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to rough it up. Why? For the epoxy holes. You get better bite on the epoxy and it yeah. cleans the shaft while you're doing it. A real purist would sometimes use a little acetone to clean any grease off of there. Well, hard to imagine you're not a purist. Well, I don't always use acetone. <laughs> we'll pay attention to these old holes in here. They don't really weaken the shaft that much. But we, want, we don't want any extrusions there that are going to widen the, the bore any. Right. So we'll clean those real well. 
All right, since I mentioned it, good degreaser gets any grease off just helps the epoxy hold and we'll get a problem small problem I thought maybe that was bent but I guess, I guess it's alright it looks pretty straight to me yeah I think it is I thought it was bent well, you know what it is I'm seeing the angle on this piece here Okay, so you just cut that pin down a little bit that we're going to put in there, and you'd marked that before. Yeah, right? rather than put a new hole in, we're going to go to the old one, but we're only going to half pin it. Got it. <coughs> now, what we're going to do, we've already dry fit our shaft, we've cleaned it, we're going to roll this in the epoxy, and we're going to work it into the shaft, or the shaft into the head. Yeah, boy, this is a critical part here. It absolutely it? is. Now, while I've got that in there, I'm going to take my toothpick and I'm going to put some in through the butt. I want to get it down in here. All right. Now, we got that excess there. What we can do with that is... Just put it there. We're going to roll it again. Get a little more on there. I might take this, put a little up in here. I'm turning the shaft. I'm spreading that epoxy in there. One th you see how that we got a little neck crack worked? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to spread that. If necessary, we'll add a little bit right here. But when we tightly put whipping over that thing, that's going to I won't be a problem. Solve that problem. No, nope. those little hairline cracks it's, in the neck are not. It's very rare to to, to to get a screw out without a little bit of a crack. I mean, it's almost paper thin at the top there. Yeah, it's very thin, and that's why you want to reset the shaft. Epoxy on that pin and drop that in. Right down in there. Okay, so you were able to just nudge that old pin out of the way. And yeah, I re-drilled it. Put a complete pin in here now. Yeah, and we can. I think we can get a complete one in. Look at that! It just went right on through. Now, what we might do while we're at it. Is we'll drill this out. If see if we've got a hole here. Since the set screw hole was already in the old shaft and it lined up pretty well with the one that's in the head, we're going to go ahead and put that sole locking screw in, or try to. Okay, so we got the the set screw in. We got the set screw in. We got epoxy on it. We're just going to we're just going to seat it a little bit. Help it 
So we got a full, we got it, we managed to get a full back screw in and that lock screw on the sole. Well, that's the right way to do it. If you that do is it. correct way. That's as sturdy as we're going to make it. That's a pretty sturdy club. Now what we're going to do, we're going to cut this off the old shaft and see if we can slide it in. Because mm -hmm. I don't think it'll slide without doing that. It isn't critical. We can mold that without doing that, but we're going to see if we can do it. Okay, so you're just going to cut that that old piece with a hook blade. If I can salvage it, I may not be able to salvage it. There we go. No, I'm not going to be able to. But we might. We might. What we'll do is we'll epoxy it on, yeah. Okay, so we got this thing pinned and glued up, and we're going to leave this in the vise overnight, if not even a little longer than that. You'd like to the, set the it only reason we're leaving it as vise is to clue that little cosmetic paper ferrule on there, so we don't have to add some plastic wood. We could do that yes, with plastic wood. But this epoxy wood. takes takes a good. Uh, this one takes 24 hours. 24 hours. So we're going to have to let that set. We could have done that because it's a non-structural component with five minutes if we wanted yeah, to, but, but we had this and it was, we might as well We're going to let this club set up yeah. for a day and then we're going to be back.